Hey, this is Dr. K from IM Medical School, and today we're going to discuss the Krebs cycle. So sit back and relax and let's get started. We highlighted in our previous video the process of glycolysis and pyruvate decarboxylation. Today we will talk about the Krebs cycle, which takes place in the mitochondrial matrix. As we go along, I would either draw out the Krebs cycle and make notes, or print out the diagram we have provided from the link in the description below and make notes on that. If you remember, after the end of glycolysis, pyruvate is converted by pyruvate decarboxylase complex to acetyl-CoA and carbon dioxide. In the process, an NAD molecule picks up a hydrogen with the release of another hydrogen atom. The acetyl-CoA combines with oxaloacetate by the enzyme citrate synthase to produce citrate. But in the process, the CoA of acetyl-CoA is released and a water molecule is consumed. One of the uses of oxaloacetate besides as a reactant in the Krebs cycle is that it can be converted into one of the 20 amino acids. Oxaloacetate can be converted into aspartic acid by transamination. In terms of Krebs cycle regulation, citrate synthase is activated by ADP but inhibited by ATP, NADH, and succinyl-CoA. In addition, the citrate produced inhibits, if you remember, phosphofructokinase, an enzyme that facilitates a rate-limiting step of glycolysis. The reason that this occurs is that the body does not want to create too much ATP if it's not needed. So, the more citrate that is produced, this actually creates a negative feedback on the glycolysis pathway to prevent energy production. The next step is really two steps in one. First, citrate isomerizes to cis-aconitate and eventually to isocitrate via the enzyme aconitase. The next step is another two-step reaction one, where isocitrate gets converted to alpha-ketoglutarate. First, isocitrate is acted on by isocitrate dehydrogenase to form oxalosuccinate. Remember, dehydrogenase enzymes always involve removal of hydrogens. During this process, NAD picks up two hydrogen atoms. This step is completely irreversible. It is one of the rate-limiting steps of the TCA cycle. This step also produces the first carbon dioxide of the cycle. The production of NADH is very important because the loading of these hydrogen carriers will act as our drivers of energy production in the electron transport chain. Now the second step in this irreversible reaction is the conversion of oxalosuccinate to alpha-ketoglutarate. Oxalosuccinate is acted on by isocitrate dehydrogenase to be converted to the alpha-ketoglutarate. One molecule of carbon dioxide is produced. Alpha-ketoglutarate is another TCA intermediate that can be converted into an amino acid. It can be transaminated into glutamate. Realize, any intermediate that can turn into amino acid can also be created from that respective amino acid. For example, if your body needs energy, it can also utilize protein in rare circumstances. In this case, the amino acid glutamate can be broken down by glutamate dehydrogenase into alpha-ketoglutarate and enter the TCA cycle. Alpha-ketoglutarate is converted by alpha-ketoglutarate dehydrogenase complex to succinyl-CoA. In this process, CoA is added and produces the second carbon dioxide molecule of the cycle, as well as an NADH and hydrogen molecule are produced. As part of the enzyme complex, cofactors such as thiamine, pyrophosphate, lipoic acid, FAD, NAD, and coenzyme A are required for this step to take place. The alpha-ketoglutarate dehydrogenase complex is inhibited by ATP, GTP, NADH, and succinyl-CoA. It is activated by calcium. Remember, if your muscles contract, they release calcium, causing the Krebs cycle to increase activity to provide enough energy for the muscle cells. An important point to highlight is that succinyl-CoA is a product of odd chain fatty acid metabolism, as well as metabolism of some amino acids. These are alternate ways that cells can produce energy without using glucose to form pyruvate. Succinyl-CoA is acted on by succinyl-CoA thiokinase to form succinate. In the process, GDP picks up a phosphate to become GTP, and the CoA is released. Succinate is acted on by succinate dehydrogenase. In the process, 
FAD picks up two hydrogen ions to produce fumarate. Just like NADH, FADH2 is one of the drivers of energy production in the electron transport chain, which is the primary process of ATP production. It is important to note that succinate dehydrogenase is the only TCA cycle enzyme that is not in the mitochondrial matrix and is the only enzyme in the cycle that participates in the TCA cycle and the electron transport chain. Succinate dehydrogenase is located on the inner mitochondrial membrane. In the electron transport chain, succinate dehydrogenase is part of the complex 2. Now, fumarate is converted to L-malate by the enzyme fumarase with the consumption of a water molecule. Finally, L-malate is converted to oxaloacetate by malate dehydrogenase. In the process, NAD picks up two hydrogen atoms, creating the third NADH of the cycle. With oxaloacetate produced, the cycle begins again. It's important to note that this step of malate converting to oxaloacetate is a very energy-intensive step or is a positive Gibbs free energy. This means that the cell has a difficult time converting malate to oxaloacetate. So how does this step occur? Well, malate dehydrogenase is closely associated with citrate synthase. Citrate synthase, as we know, creates the conversion of oxaloacetate to citrate. This step actually releases energy known as a negative Gibbs free energy. It releases so much energy that when the step of malate to oxaloacetate is coupled with the step of oxaloacetate to citrate, the whole process creates energy and can proceed forward with ease. You may have noticed that that free oxygen largely has no role in the citric acid cycle. For some reason, if a cell is in an anaerobic state, the Krebs cycle cannot proceed. The reason is that oxygen is needed to reduce NADH and FADH2. If oxygen is not present, we will not have these carriers available to remove hydrogen ions. Overall in this cycle, there is no net production of any of the intermediates we talked about, but we do create three NADH2s, one FADH2, and one GTP from each acetyl-CoA that enters the Krebs cycle. Remember, the carbons that enter the Krebs cycle via acetyl-CoA leave as carbon dioxide and CoA. Now the cycle has only produced one GTP, so what's the point of the cycle if no significant ATP is produced? Well, it's really a setup for the electron transport chain. All the NADH and FADH2 produced here will produce a significant amount of ATP in the electron transport chain, which we will talk about later. So this is the process of the citric acid cycle, otherwise known as the Krebs cycle. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please share this video with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. Like this video, comment, and subscribe. This is Dr. K, and I'll see you next time.